after using free embroidery software for what feels like forever, I have finally decided to pay for an upgrade. And welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen, this channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. So I want to talk about embroidery software. A while back I did a video going over some of the basic functions of the free version of Embrilliance Express. Now this can be downloaded from the website and I've been using that for what like two years now and it's great for free software. It's easy to use. I walked you guys through how I do fonts and also save them as working files and as files for my embroidery machine. But there's some limitations to the free version like anything that's free. And finally I decided to pay for an upgrade. So I have now upgraded to the Embrilliance Essentials. So what I'm gonna do in this video is kind of explain why I made the change, also how I decided to choose which version of the paid software I wanted to get because there are several different types, and also what you can do in the version I chose. If you're looking for embroidery software, I felt like this was not too crazy in terms of budgeting and cost, and I can still do a lot of what I want. So I have the Brother PE800 embroidery machine. I know I featured it in a lot of videos and there are a lot of in-machine functions that you can do in terms of design. You can use multiple designs. You can move them around on the touch screen and stitch them out. And there are a lot of good features with the machine. My issue with it is that sometimes on the small screen, it's kind of hard to see exactly how the design will look. And I also found it to be a little bit cumbersome in terms of putting those designs together. So for instance, say you could take a house design that you do for the embroidery stuff and you also wanted to add like a name or a phrase or something like that. You certainly could do that with the Brother P800. I do like that it has a color touch screen. It is pretty easy to use, but the small size of the screen can make it a little bit harder to determine like if it looks good. And I really just wanted a few features that the free version of Embrilliance Express did not have. So this is the Embrilliance website. I know there's a ton of different options out there in terms of embroidery software. I've heard a lot of people talking about Inkscape and Ink Stitch which are free. I think it's like open source software and Ink Stitch is a plugin so you can take the designs you create in Inkscape and then turn them into embroidery designs and digitize that. I have heard from people who've been doing digitizing for a long time say that there's a learning curve and if you want to get really high quality embroidery designs, it's gonna take you quite a while to learn how to digitize properly. Now that's something that I personally uh, just don't want to learn how to do. Not like I'm making myself sound super lazy here, but I'm not a designer at heart. That's not really my thing. And I personally don't have an interest in learning how to do embroidery digitizing myself. If I have something I want to embroider, I'll either do one of two things. I will find a design that I'm looking for or I've done this a few times, I've had like a logo or a something specific I wanted and I paid a digitizer that I found on Etsy. You can also find them all over the place. I don't have one in particular that I can recommend at this time, but they're certainly out there and they only charge like 10 to $20 per design or per logo. And they were able to do several different sizes and then send me the files. For me, that's a lot easier and cost effective because again, I don't have a ton of time. I do this YouTube channel. I also do some other stuff and I just didn't want to have the learning curve and the, all of the time commitment involved in learning to digitize. Again, you might want to digitize your own stuff or learn how to do that. Again, I'm just not that type of person. So that's not really for me. I get a lot of questions about that and that's just not in my wheelhouse. So I've been sticking with Embrilliance. The free version I found very easy to use. And the free version though, what, what would happen with that is you could take a .bx font. Now that is a computer font, but it is specifically for embroidery machines. And, and it's an embroidery design basically. But the B, .bx file type allowed you to type out the phrases versus 
say if it was just an embroidery design file, like the brother machines are .pes, you would have to take each of those letters, import them, and arrange them the way you want. So that would take way more time. So I'm very grateful to have BX fonts. I think it's awesome and it really saves you a lot of time. So going into the Embrilliance Essentials software, the free version, basically you can take BX fonts turn them into a file, but you can't really merge them with other designs. So say I add a BX font. If you want to see the basic basis, basics, go back to the previous video I did. I will link it down below in the uh, info box and I walk you through downloading a font, importing a font and how to do that. But in this video, I really want to go through what the essentials software has and full disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video at all. I paid for this myself. I have no affiliation to the company. I am just a customer. So this is a completely unbiased review and video. This is a software that I'm comfortable with. You can choose what's comfortable for you. There are different options out there. It's interesting because I did get an opportunity a while back to get free, very expensive, I think it was the Hatch, the Hatch software by like Wilcom. Uh, somebody approached me and asked me if I would do a series of videos on that software and they would give me the software for free. I thought about it and I decided to turn down this opportunity. It was not from the company directly. It was from someone that it was a, another company that just was a reseller of that software. But I decided to turn that down for a number of reasons. Uh, the first reason is that I personally just, again, did not want to dedicate a ton of time to trying to learn how to use embroidery software. I really did not feel like I would be a strong candidate for doing that type of designing or learning how to digitize. And the other thing was that the software, that software is really expensive. It's about, I think, $1,000. And when I'm doing videos for you guys here at The Sewing Report, I also really think about the viewers. And I think a lot of the viewers I have here are not super advanced sewists. I really like to try to help beginners or people that are very early on in their sewing journeys. I did not feel like that software would be a good fit for you guys because I just don't think a lot of viewers here are in the market for a $1,000 embroidery software. So yeah, I could have done some videos on it and gotten the free software, but I just didn't feel like it was a good fit for this channel at the time. Plus it's again, designing and digitizing. I didn't think were really something that I felt confident I could relay in a, in a way that would be helpful. And I just really didn't feel very confident in my own abilities to learn the software, especially in a short period of time. I do get offers from companies sometimes where they're like, hey, will you try this out? I've also gotten some people reaching out saying, hey, I, I have a digitizing service. Will you uh, promote this to your followers and your audience? And I usually say no, especially if I haven't tried out that company's products or services. I'm just not real comfortable with people approaching me to do it. I like things I present here or share to be a little bit more organic. And this is a company that I chose on my own. Again, they've never approached me or anything. So I am a fan and I decided I've seen this version of the software. So they have a lot of different things and I wanna kind of go through the options and so the reason I chose the Essentials package is because the tools it has are merging designs, which was something I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to take a BX font and merge it with another design that I bought somewhere else. And you can do that here. Uh, resizing designs, and it looks like you can recalculate stitches a bit, which is cool. When they say recalculate stitches, I'm still not exactly sure what that means, but I will be finding out shortly. And I haven't done a lot with this software, so that's why I wanted to do kind of a walkthrough and we can explore some things together. You can remove overlapping stitches. This is huge to me. I did a towel recently and I did a uh, one design and then I had lettering that was on top of some of the other design. And I really like the fact that it will remove the stitches behind the top stitches. So that is great. You can colorize so you can change the color of the thread so you can really see what it looks like. 
print templates, ad lettering, and so much more. And one really big thing that I was excited about for the Essentials version, you can actually save the applique shapes as cut files. Normally when I've been doing applique, and I'll show you an example here, the design will do the placement stitch so you know where to put your fabric for the applique over that. It will then stitch a tack down stitch. And then after that, you have to take the hoop off of the machine and tediously cut around the entire shape. And sometimes the shapes can be a little tricky to cut and you have to try to cut out the fabric as close to the stitching as possible because then you put the hoop back into the machine and then it'll satin stitch around the whole applique. And I've had the issue sometimes of where the applique, I didn't trim it close enough to the tack down stitch. And then when it does the satin stitch, there's still some fabric that's hanging off of the edge of the satin stitch. And I'll show you an example. So this can be a little bit disappointing and I've been let down a bit. So I'm really excited to try out the feature where you can take the applique shape and then save it as an SVG file so that if you have an electronic cutting machine, you can put some heat and bond on the back of it, cut it using the like bonded fabric setting, when you put it on the placement stitch, you don't have to do all the trimming. So I'm gonna be trying that out in the near future and I think that'll be really super cool. So here's some of the features it has. You can import and type text using the popular BX font design. Again, you can do that with the free version too, but I'm really excited about the ability to also save several designs. So if you wanted to create, take several different standalone embroidery machine elements, you can do that and then save it. So that's the big difference between that and the free version is that you can't do that in the free version. You can't merge designs and save them all together as a new file. How much does this cost? I paid, it's on, currently as I'm shooting this, it was on sale for $139. The normal price is $149.95. And they also have a lot of different packages too. There's something called Stitch Artist. And that is more if you are creating your own designs from scratch. I really didn't feel like I needed that. There is Enthusiast. This, I also didn't really feel like I needed to do. It, it does knock down stitching, so that's good for towels, thread palettes, pull compensation. This definitely gives you the option to really fine tweak a design. And I'm learning, like there's so much, I think the thing I'm learning is as I get into this, there are so many tiny little factors and different aspects to digitizing. I had no idea about it. And again, that's one of the reasons I decided not to really go down that road. I think like you're just opening up the door to endless amounts of knowledge. I think it's cool if for the people who do do dig digitizing, it is a very specialized skill. And I really respect someone that's taken the time to learn that. I'm just not that person. So you can get enthusiasts and also you can also split up designs. So if you want to try to rehoop projects and then do larger designs, but doing it in multiple hooping situations, you could do that. I just didn't feel like I needed that at this time. There's another one. Okay. Oh yeah. The stitch artists, they have different levels. This is where it's getting really pricey. And this is like where you're really doing custom designs or you're trying to digitize images and that sort of thing. Yeah, these are really expensive, but there are a lot of different options. I really like that Embrilliance gives you many different tiers to fit your needs. Like I don't need some of this advanced stuff, but it's, it's out there if you want it. And here's the free version. If you don't have that already, you can download the free version and I'll link the software below if you're interested. With that all being said, yes, I did finally upgrade and I got the essentials package. And so far, I think it's been pretty cool. I haven't played with it a ton, but I'm excited. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the actual software. I'm gonna walk you through my version of Embrilliance Essentials and we're just gonna play around with a little bit and see what happens. I think this will be really cool. All right, so here is Embrilliance Essentials. And this looks just like the free version on the surface. So it does look, you can zoom in and out and you can also change, I believe you can change what it looks like. So you can change, like this is clearly set up for a five by seven hoop. And I know that you can change the way it looks. Okay, so you can change what kind of hoop you're doing. 
Like this says it's approximately five by seven. Let's see here, eight by 12. Okay, let me get. So if you have different hoop sizes, you can customize it to whatever hoop you have. Eight by eight, this is six by six. All right, so this is five by seven. I'm gonna guess the 100 by 100. Yeah, that's four by four. So now this is set up for a four by four inch hoop. I'm gonna go back to the five inch by seven inch hoop though, cause that's the one I normally use a lot, but it's cool that you can change this out. All right, here we go. And let me pull in some of my designs. So we'll just go through some of the designs and I'm gonna show you some of the features cause I am pretty excited. I also have all of my fonts loaded in there and I did explain how to do that in the previous video I did about embroidery software. If you're not familiar with the text stuff, I did do that, but there's, see this little A up here, you hit that, then your text shows up. And in this text box here, you can change what it says. So now I'll do Jennifer. So see, this is the like default. And yeah, you can move this all around. You can obviously change the thread color. And I like these buttons because this centers everything. So if, if you kind of move your design around, but then you want it to go back to the center, you just hit this button and it goes back to the center. And you can also hit your arrow keys and change that as well. I'm using my arrow keys. I'm using the up key, the down key, left, right. And these green dots here, you can actually just move one letter if you want to. Oh wait, yeah, so that just moved one letter. I don't wanna do that, let's hit, all right, where's the undo button here? I think this is the undo, okay. All right, now we know this is the undo button. Let's center this again, and I will go into my fonts. So these are all fonts, these are all BX fonts that I have saved. So see this, there's a bold cursive, and you can change the spacing. So see, you can, so I can have all these letters be smushed together or spaced out. You can also make them slant. And I think this button here resets everything. Okay, here we go. So this resets everything. You can also rotate your design. So see, the Jennifer doesn't fit into the short side of the hoop, but if I turn it, rotate it 90 degrees, it does. So you can do all kinds of stuff with the software and then you can save, the best part though is that you can save the file. We're gonna choose another font here, maybe something small. So this is two inch, okay, that's very large. All right, here's 0.5 inch, okay, that's a little small. Here's one inch, okay, so here's Jennifer here. Now I'm going to get some of my embroidery files and I keep a folder on my computer and I just keep all of my designs in this one folder. So let's take this when this is kitchen mixer applique. And when you buy an embroidery file, it tends to look like this. Once you download it, you'll get like, these are all the different file types that you can get. And I'm, I'm just going, and usually there's also like an instruction chart. So this one did come with an instruction chart. Let me pull this up. And that is just like a JPEG file or whatever. So it shows you how many different colors of thread you use. And you know, it's it can be really handy. So you can print these out for your different embroidery projects if you wanna just know offhand what you need to do in terms of changing your thread out and knowing what the sizes are. So let's, Import, try to import one of these. All right, I don't, and I'll, she included version. Okay, all versions have the same design and should show, sew out identically. Okay, so she did a lot of versions of this. I'm gonna take the three inch size and here we go. So now I've imported the mixer and you can see that each thread step is clearly laid out, which is cool. I actually am really glad I got the paid version so far. I'm liking it. Move the Jennifer down, here we go. So let's say I wanted to do this. And then let's say I wanted the mixer to be above that a little bit. You know, say this is a gift for a friend that likes to bake a lot, something like that. So let's take a look at, and this is an applique. So we can actually, 
I did look up how to do the applique template thing, and that's pretty cool. There's something here called the Stitch Simulator, which is actually pretty neat. It will actually show you how the machine will stitch it out and in what order. So that's actually pretty interesting. Isn't this cool? Like, I'm actually really glad I got this version. I'm liking it. And then you can see here how... This is just so awesome. Like, I just think this is so cool. I don't know. All right, and let's see if I can figure out how to do the template thing. All right, so I think this is the placement stitch and I think this is the tacking stitch. Here's my placement stitch. I'm going to go down to this color section. All right, here's applique. If you go to applique position, I believe this will allow you to save the file. So it says fabric view none clear or simulated and then the cutting so you can either have it be zero so it would cut exactly what the applique would be but keep in mind that you do need the fabric to go a little bit outside a tiny bit this placement stitch otherwise it won't you know it won't really stay down you can have the applique be zero to you know three millimeter larger on a larger all around than the actual thing I'm gonna try let's do 1.5 millimeters that's a pretty small amount but it would be just enough to hopefully be just outside the placement stitch all right let's see what happens when you save okay oh here we go and now you can save this as an SVG I'm gonna try this out in a future video and actually see if this works. You know, I'm gonna save this as a cut file and then see how it opens. All right, so let's save this. All right, many programs are made with DPI. So I guess I should do the same thing. So Adobe Corel and Cricut default at 70, 72. I guess I'll do 72 since that's what it says Cricut does. Okay, it appeared to save. All right, so we're gonna actually open up design space and see if just see if that worked all right we're gonna upload image you can see I, I have lots of BTS images here so that's fun all right and we're gonna give this a whirl okay that seemed to work cut image try to upload this and we're gonna see if this works this looks about right 1.468 inches appeared to be correct all right do basic cut and that's it. So I hypothetically, I should be able to cut this on a cutting machine and it would be exactly right for the applique. So I'm going to be testing this out in, a, in another video. We won't do that in this one, but I just wanted to give you guys a walkthrough of what you can do with Imbrilliance Essentials. I think that function alone is going to be really cool and it should save me some time from having to do that just such tedious trimming with the tiny scissors around the tack down stitch. This is a really cool thing and I'm really glad you can do that. All right, let's see if you can do it for the other one. So you should be able to do it with this one too. All right, let's see here, applique, I think it was applique position, wait, wait, hold on a second. Not applique, all right. So, here we go. Yeah, it looks like you can do it with this one too. Very cool. And obviously you'd want to save that as a different name so they're not the same. But uh, yeah, this does seem to be about 1.4 inches. That looks about right, actually. Like a little under one and a half inches across. So I mean, that looks right. So let me show you something else that you can do. Obviously, I wouldn't really do this, but say I wanted to put this over this design, which I probably wouldn't do in real life, but you know, it is what it is. You can also change the order thing stitching. So say I wanted the mixer to stitch out first and then my name on top of it, which I don't, but you could. There's a really cool feature that will remove the hidden stitches. So the stitches that are behind the letters here, like you, you can see it overlaps. This little button here will get rid of the stuff in the back. Notice here, it did just that. So you see here, it took out some of the stitching so it will reduce the bulk of like how much thread is at one spot. So that's really cool. And let's bring up the stitch simulator again. And you can actually see that it, it is working. All right. 
All right. So see how it left a gap and that is for the letters. So that is another really cool thing that you can do. So you see here and here and here and here, that's where the letters will go. So it automatically detected that there will be other thread stitching on top and it left some space so that you're not stitching so much stitches on top of stitches. But I think these are all really cool features. I'm really excited to use the software more and try to get better with it. I think there are some functions that I can really see myself using in the future for sure. All right, and you can either save both the stitch file and the working file, so you can do one or the other, or you can do both. So let's say I wanted to save this design. With the free version, you cannot save this because it's two different designs and they're external, so they're like third party. You can't do that. But with the paid version, you can. And that's like one of the primary reasons I got it. And we'll just save that. And now it will save it both as a PES file and as this file here in Embrilliance that I can open back up and edit later. So I again, I just wanted to do like a quick walkthrough, just sort of a first impressions of the software. Obviously I've shown it before, but now that I've paid for more features, I wanted to show you some of the possibilities it has and why I decided to spend the extra money on it. If you don't have the budget for it, I would keep using the free version. You can do some of this, like you can merge designs in the Brother P800, but again, it's a little clunkier. You know, you can't remove the hidden stitches and it's much easier to see in this software than it is on the little screen. So that was really the main reason I bought it. But let me know down below in the comments, is this something that you would consider? Are you interested in doing embroidery stuff like this? Like this is like very, very light. This isn't even designing. This is more like just manipulating designs you already bought. But if you're kind of a beginner to embroidery, I do think something, that, something like this would be helpful for you, especially if you're kind of new to it. And I did notice that Embrilliance does have some tutorial videos, I believe, on their YouTube channel. And I'll try to link that below too, in case you want to get some help. There's a lot of supporting resources for the software. I was able to learn it pretty easily and it wasn't too tricky for me. So that's why I decided to go for this one. And so far I have not been disappointed. There are other options. Let me know though, what software do you use if you use an embroidery software? And if you have any tips for using Embrilliance Essentials, please let me know. I am still very much a beginner, but that's why I kind of feel like maybe I'm a good person to talk about this because I'm not some sort of design whiz. And I think sometimes that can be a little bit intimidating, especially if you haven't really worked with embroidery software very much, and I have not. So I'm really going into this cold, but I'm really excited for all the stuff that I should be able to do with this paid version. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to machine embroidery, I have a lot of other videos about using the Brother P800. I also have several Q&A type videos where I answer some of the most commonly asked questions. I get, believe it or not, a ton of questions about embroider machines since I've started doing this series. And also a quick disclaimer, I am not a machine tech or any sort of brother expert. So I would ask that you guys please don't like DM me or email me and ask specific questions troubleshooting your machine. I can't really do that and I would encourage you to reach out to brother support, but I'm just not comfortable doing that type of one-on-one -on -one troubleshooting and that's really not my area of expertise. But I hope you found this video helpful. What interests you about embroidery software? Like, what do you want to learn? And you know, what other types of videos can I do to help you out if you're very new to it? I'm I'm really trying to, to help out, especially the beginners to embroidery machines. I think they're so much fun and I've been using mine just a lot more than I thought I did. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and hit the like button. And you're welcome to subscribe to this channel if you'd like to join our sewing and crafting community. Again, I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next video. And remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.